on our analyst desk. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, looking at this game, we got, we got, we got, we can start with TEK's team composition because I think at first glance, some people might say, "Oh, well, you know, they're auto relegated, so they're just going to pick, you know, kind of whatever, whatever champions, and maybe, what and maybe throw away the game, right?" Mm. Well, that absolutely did not happen here. They they chose champions. They, they roamed the map. They picked up a ton of kills yeah. early. They really brought it to Cloud9 in this game. Yeah, and if you look at Ninja and Emperor, right? Ninja and Emperor, both from Korea, they both went to different regions originally, to China and to Brazil, and now they're both in NA. These guys just want to play League of Legends, and every opportunity they, opportunity they get to play League of Legends, they try to deliver. The cojones they had to run this team composition is absolutely crazy. I love cracking you up, Jack. Two things. It's my favorite thing on the No desk. wave clear. It's, like, it's pretty so much risky. at all. Lucian, Zed, Kha'Zix. Pretty much all physical damage outside of Zac. If this team composition doesn't snowball out of control, if Cloud9 ever had an advantage in that game, they seed, they push, they win. If they right. get a Baron, if yeah. they get anything, they're able to take them down. So TDK, very risky. They did it. But they did it. Well, so let's... Uh, I want to jump into our... <laughs> yeah, right. It's the miracle season that, that Freak uh, was talking yeah. about when they finally had the roster back. I do want to jump into our replay 28 minutes in around the Baron pit where TDK ends up picking up an ace because this is, you know, kind of that point that you were talking about, Jack, yeah. where if Cloud9 had won this, it would have tipped the scales, would have put them into the game with a Baron, would have let them roll over. Yeah, and specifically, I want to talk about the outplay that Ninja had on Zed in this fight because so much has been made about Zed and his inability to return from his ultimate and how that makes him irrelevant as a champion. But if we watch in this clip, actually, everyone is thinking that as soon as Ed ults in, he is going to die. But that is actually not the case. At the very start of this fight, obviously, TDK is scattered, as is to be expected. They are playing fast and loose. Cloud9 is still playing together, and they group up into this corridor. The flank will then come in, and the biggest thing is just watch specifically what Ninja does on Zed. Alting, and he flashes right after his death mark detonates, causing Incarnation to completely whiff his shockwave. Everyone on Cloud9 was expecting to one-shot Ninja, and then after he got out, he could also still use his spells cast from his shadow and allow the rest of the team to clean up. Like, this was far and away the turning point in the game because it was, it ended up being a five for zero ace in these very scattered fights, but the, the chaos was created by that flash from Ninja. And they yeah. got a Baron off that, and they were able to just continue with their spikes when they get the last Whispers, when mm -hmm. they have the penetration coming into their builds, and there's only one armor item completed. I think only about four or five actually did get completed for C9 in that entire game, because they were just so far ahead of the curve after that. Yeah, Ninja yeah. Tabby's double frozen heart, Thorn Mail, half completed Thorn Mail yeah. Yeah. on Maokai. So not enough armor coming through to combat those last Whispers. Now, the last thing we have to touch on is the fact that with this loss, Cloud9 is in a very precarious position going into tomorrow, because if Team 8 wins, boom, that's it. Mm -hmm. Their seventh place dreams are done. But this also means that even if Team 8 loses, Cloud9 has to beat TSM tomorrow in order to force a tiebreaker for that 7th place slot. Yeah. Last split, they're in a very different situation where they'd need a win and then a tiebreaker win in order to get a first round playoff <laughs> by. Uh, this time, yeah, they have to take down TSM. If Team 8 beats COG, none of this matters. Right. Because Team 8 would secure 7th place. And they've made it very hard on themselves once again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so when it, you know, looking at that game though, Zyrene, we saw the new new come out for high. We keep seeing these new champions come in. We saw this, you know, kind of protect the Tristana that you may maybe would yeah. have preferred to have seen last, last year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, regardless, we saw this comp come out for them in not too great effect. It's the third time they've run something like this, though. They ran Maokai, Oriana, Karma. It's a speed-up, protect-people <laughs> composition. And then they just kind of slot people into those jungle in the AD carry role. This time it was Tristana. Yeah. It was okay, but they weren't able to execute at all. So it's all about protecting those high-value carries and also Incarnation performing on Oriana, which was something that they were able to play around and flank from different angles so multiple people didn't get Shockwave. We saw that one Shockwave at the bottom turret that hit three people, and it was like, whoa, that could turn it around with an 8k gold yeah. deficit. That's one of the hardest team compositions to play Orion into, though. Yeah. If you think about the targets you're actually trying to hit with that Shockwave, it's near impossible. They're usually on top of you at yeah. that point. It's very, very hard. Yeah, I do want to touch on something for TDK, though. Okay, Real Because quick. we know they're auto-relegated. We know we're going to be seeing them not in the LCS. I hope they stay together for Challenger because this team is very entertaining to watch. This is a team that I feel like with more time and more synergy between them will actually be a good contender for the middle of the pack if they stay together. One can only hope. I think, uh, I can't I remember whether them. it was Freak or Kobe that mentioned, you know, imagine if we had seen the roster <laughs> together sooner. 
you know, they've provided some really fun games. What what we could have, you know, what we could have seen with a full season or a full split behind them, rather. Now, there's only one more game left for each team, so let's see how the teams are stacked up in the standings. And to drive home what's at stake for our teams, this graphic shows how things would fall if the season were to end wow. right now, with the ties broken by alphabetical order. Now, tied in first place for the playoff buys are CLG, Gravity, Team Impulse, and Team Liquid. Then one game back and still in the running for a possible first round buy, it's TSM in in fifth. Team Dignitas is in sixth. Team eight is holding seventh and the guaranteed spot in the next LCS split. But Cloud9 are only one game back in eighth and still have a chance to tie break that. Enemy Esports is in ninth, while Team Dragon Knights are in last. But it all comes down to tomorrow and our final day of regular season play. Up first, Enemy Esports will square off against Team Dignitas. After that, Counterlogic Gaming takes on Team Eight. Then it's TSM versus Cloud9. In our fourth match, Gravity will battle Team Dragon Knights. Then it's Team Liquid versus Team Impulse, who will attempt to extend their winning streak to a 9-0 to finish the back half of the split. If there are any tiebreakers, we will bring you those immediately after the conclusion of that last match. Our resident statistics experts have been crunching the numbers and calculate a chance of seven total tiebreaker games. So stock up, <laughs> wow. us as well, we have to make sure we stock up and be prepared to go the long haul with us in case we go into overtime tomorrow. Now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Same LCS time, same LCS channel.